Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Right, let's let's have a look at this one from 2014. Um, find the integral of 5 cos 3x dx. Okay, so to do this, we will use a, a little bit of help in hand from the log table, it's page 26. Um, it's cos, so it tells us cos of x goes to sine of x once we integrate it, okay? And they're the opposite of each other, and not surprising because cos and sine are opposite each other here too, okay? We're going backwards. Um, it, it didn't tell us ax, okay? So I'll show you how to deal with that one in a minute. So Typically how these are done when there's a, a constant um, at, at the start, we, we take that outside the integral sign, okay? It's, it's the easier way to see how to do it. So then to integrate it, uh, cos 3x, um, we know from here, cos goes to sine, okay? So cos 3x will go to sine 3x, but you'll divide by three. Okay, if you remember when we are integrating in this one, um, let me show you if I'm integrating cos 3x, okay, so dy dx, um, this would be our letter A, we would do cos 3x by 3, okay, we'd multiply it by that letter A, okay, in integration it's the opposite, so we divide by that letter A. Okay, and you can always check your answer. Um, as such, if I differentiate this one, I will get a third, which is that constant on the bottom by cos 3x. And of course I have to multiply by the a. Okay, and the third and the three cancel. And you can see you get back to a cos 3x. Okay, so you can always check your integration by going backwards and seeing can you get back to what you started with because these are the opposite of each other. Okay, um, where's my pen? Okay, and then we have to add on our constant of integration. Um, so we'll end up with five over three. It's technically a little bit wrong, now that one. Five over three times sine 3x plus my c. Okay, it's nicer like that. So 5 over 3 sine 3x plus c is the answer to that one. Okay, the slope of the tangent to a curve y is equal to f of x at each point x, y is 2x minus 2. The curve cuts the x-axis at minus two zero. Okay. Um, okay. Find the equation of f of x. So this is is a true example of them exploring that relationship between um, differentiation and integration, and them being the opposite of each other. Slope of the tangent to the curve you should know is dy dx. So what they're telling you there is that dy dx, the slope of the tangent to the curve is 2x minus 2. Okay, and they're asking you then to find f of x, which is like the original function. So to do this, I would write dy equal to 2x minus 2 times dx. Okay, and then if I get the integral of both sides, you end up with y. Okay, because the integral of dy gives you y. Okay, and this is where this comes out of, and this is why there's always a dx at the end of it. So it's equal to the integral of 2x minus 2 times dx. Okay, and of course we know that f of x is y. Okay, so me, cal me uh, solving for y is solving for f of x. So if I integrate this, um, so take each term, increase the power of x by 1 and divide by the new power, increase the power of x by one. And in this case, we have x to the power of zero. Okay, in other words, 
there's no x, okay? So you increase the power of x by one, okay, plus c. Our y is equal to, I can cancel out these two twos, x squared minus two x plus c. Okay, now, why did I color that bit in pink? Well, if they're going to expect you to find the original equation of f of x, um, they're going to want you to solve for the constant of integration. They want you to figure out, was there a constant there in the original f of x that um, equated to zero after you differentiated it, for example, okay? So in other words, 3x squared plus two, if I was to differentiate that, you're going to get two threes or six x. Okay, I've lost the two. So therefore, when you integrate that plus c is to represent any constants that might have been lost um, in the process. Okay, so when they give you an extra piece of information like they do here, they do that to help you solve for c. Okay, in other words, we know this curve cuts the x axis at the x axis at minus two zero. Okay, so I'm going to use that piece of information. So minus two zero. Okay, and um, so we know that satisfies our equation. Okay, in other words, that's my x, that's my y. Okay, so let's sub it in. So my x, so I'll have minus two squared minus two times minus two plus that constant of integration is equal to my y value. Okay, I just moved the y over to the end. So minus two squared is four, minus two by minus two is another four, plus c is equal to zero. So therefore four and four is eight, bring it over, c is equal to minus eight. Therefore, f of x, my original function, I'm gonna put that minus eight in here and I'm going to just rewrite this out. So it's equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. Okay, and then uh, B part 2 of that question, find the average value of f over the interval 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to uh, 3. Okay, so very important part of uh, integration and this could come up in any in any question okay it is often put on as the last uh, part of a question and it, and it really could be any question look out for those two keywords average value okay and in many cases it is um, you do it through integration. There's a formula you have to learn off for it. It is not in the log tables. It's one of the few that's not. And it is one over B minus A, the integral between A and B of um, F of X DX. Okay. So in other words, I, I need to put my F of X in here. Okay. B and A are the limits that you're um, finding the area between. So for me, my limits are zero and three, okay? So let's do that. So I'm going to have, find the area between zero and three of my f of x, so x squared minus two x minus eight, dx, and then of course I need my one over b minus a here. Okay, so let's integrate it. So one over three minus zero, so it's a third of, um, okay, so x squared, so go up a power, divide by the new power, up a power, divide by the new power, minus 2x, go up a power in x and divide by the new power, go up a power in x, okay, and that's between 0 and 3. Okay, so it's equal to a third, and I'm just going to park the third over there out of the way, so I'm going to, it's top minus the bottom. So it will be 3 cubed over 3 minus 2 times 3 squared over 2 minus 8 times 3 minus uh, 0 cubed over 3 minus 2 times 0 squared over 2 minus 8 times 0. Okay, and I knew before I wrote this out um, that this is going to be zero, okay? Because his x terms all the way across and he's zero. For an exam, I would still always write that out, okay? You're, you're showing your examiner, you know the method of, um, of integrating, okay? Between two limits, finding the area of, 
of a curve between two limits. So I, I think it's worthwhile writing it out. OK, um, but I do no more with it. it, it it's minus zero. So it's a third of, let me put this bit into a calculator. So three cubed over three minus two bracket three squared over two minus eight times three. So I am getting minus 24 for him. Minus zero. OK, so it's equal to a third of minus 24. So it's equal to uh, 81624 minus eight. OK, so it's an average value of um, f over the interval naught is less than or equal to three is or naught is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to three. OK, so an important question to know how to do. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.